It is the sunnah of Allah that Allah blesses His prophets with miracles that His people can understand to know that the Prophet is speaking the truth. Look at the previous miracles. The Prophet Salih was sent to the nation of Thamud. And what did Thamud do? Thamud was able to carve into mountains. Thamud built structures inside mountains. To this day we wonder how did they build those structures. And when the Prophet Salih came, what was the miracle given to Salih? Allah Azza wa Jal gifted him the camel. What was the camel? You think you can create structures out of mountains? Allah can create life out of mountains. You think you are so high and mighty and powerful that you can carve a room into a mountain. Can you create a she camel from a mountain? Look at the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. He was sent to Fir'aun and the people of Fir'aun, they excelled in the dark arts in magic and sihr. They excelled in sihr. They managed to do feats of sihr that would amaze the crowds. In front of all of Egypt, they did these quote-unquote miracles, which was nothing but magic. They made the people think that the staffs that they have were like snakes because they could wiggle. They made the people see the wiggling and they said, this is a great magic that you can fool 10,000 people. Then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah didn't just pretend to wiggle some staffs. Allah created life from those staffs. Allah created life from those staffs. And in front of their eyes, it wasn't a miracle of an illusion. It was an actual miracle of creation that Allah, Allah created snakes from those staffs. And that is why the magicians recognize this is not a feat of, of the eye. This is not a joke. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Isa, Jesus, he came in a group of people, the Romans. They prided themselves on their medicine. They prided themselves that we can heal the cure. We have reached a level of, of medicinal expertise that no one before us has done. And perhaps they were right for their time and frame. What did Allah send Isa with? Can you cure the leper? Can you heal the blind? Can you resurrect the dead by the permission of Allah? And they realized this is not magic. This is not medicine. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point being, every nation to whom a prophet was sent, their miracle reflected their culture so that they best appreciate the miracle. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to the Arabs. And who were the Arabs? What did they pride themselves in? They did not pride themselves in medicine. They were not experts of the dark arts and magic. They didn't carve things into structures. What was their source of pride? It was their eloquence. It was their balagha. It was their lugha. That's what they considered themselves to be the best at. And every year after the Hajj, when all of the tribes of Arabia were gathered before Islam, the Arab tribes would send their best poets and their equivalent of the Nobel Prize, their equivalent of the Academy, the Oscars, the Emmys. Who was it given to? Not to actors, to poets. They prized poets like they prized no one else. And the best poetry was honored by being hung on the Kaaba. And for a few generations, at least one generation before the coming of the Prophet wasallam, there were seven famous poems called Al-Mu'allaqat al-Sab'a, the seven hanging poems or hanging odes, because they were tacked to the door of the Kaaba. So the Arabs thought, who can beat us in eloquence? Then Allah Azza wa Jal sent the Qur'an upon a person who was not known for his poetry. He was not known for being a poet. He had no poetic experience. And that was the miracle. A person who could not even read and write. A person who did not have the type of formal education of reading and literature and writing that one would expect from a poet. Yes, an honest person. Yes, an amazing person. But somebody who was not known to read and write. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ كِقَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكْ إِذَا لَرْتَابَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ Neither, this is in the Quran, neither did you write a book before this, nor did you recite any poetry before the Qur'an came down? And this was the proof that the Prophet ﷺ was the real Prophet. And this is something that is demonstrated in the Qur'an itself. There are five verses in the Qur'an, exactly five, 
that are called the verses of challenge, ayatul tahaddi. They challenge mankind to produce something similar to the Quran. If you are in doubt as to the Quran, Allah is saying, you're not sure if the Quran is from Allah. You're not sure if this is a divine message. Then Allah says, bring a book similar to it. They couldn't do that. So then Allah lowered it. Bring 10 surahs. Ashri surah muftarayat. Bring 10 surahs. They couldn't do it. Then Allah says, bring something similar. They couldn't do it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seal the challenge by the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, which we all know. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا If you are in doubt that this book is from Allah, if you are in doubt, then what should you do? Let them bring suratim min mithli. One surah like it. وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ In this challenge, Allah is saying, I'm even allowing you teamwork. Go ahead and cheat. Go ahead and get the help of anyone besides Allah. Go ahead and get all of mankind to bring three verses, one surah like it. Then Allah sealed the challenge. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا If you cannot do it, and you shall never be able to do it, then if you doubt the Qur'an, there is no alternative other than Jahannam. You have failed the challenge. You are allowed to cheat with anyone. Bring all of the jinn, bring all of the ins, and bring three verses similar to it. This is a simple challenge. And Allah sealed the challenge because the challenge said, you shall never be able to do it. And this is called the verses of tahaddi or the verses of the miraculous nature of the Quran. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Ma min nabiyyin. There has never been a Prophet except that Allah has given him miracles because of which his people believed in him. There has never been a Prophet except that Allah has given him miracles because of which his people have believed in him. And then he says something that is a bit strange. He said, وَإِنَّمَا And the only miracle that I have been given. Now pause here before I finish the hadith. The hadith translates as the only miracle I have been given. But technically, it was given many miracles and many books have been written about the miracles of the Prophet. Actually, Imam al-Bayhaqi, a famous great scholar, died a thousand years ago. He wrote a 16-volume book, no exaggeration, 16 volumes entitled The Miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. He has been given a lot of miracles. So then why is he saying وسلم, the only miracle? Two things. Number one, all of these other miracles, yes, they happen without a doubt, but they were done primarily, primarily for the Muslims to see, or as a result of a circumstance or situation, not as a response to a challenge, not as a response, I want to see a miracle, show me you're a prophet. And secondly, the quantity and the quality of this miracle is so magnificent that all of the other miracles are trivial compared to it. So the miracle that is the mother of all miracles, the miracle that eclipses all other miracles, the miracle that is the definitive miracle is the miracle of the Quran. That's why he has the right to say, and the only miracle I have been given, everything else is trivial compared to this. The only miracle I have been given is the Quran. The only miracle is the Quran. And then he said, and that is why I am optimistic that I shall have the largest ummah on the day of judgment. What has the largest ummah got to the miracle of the Quran? This hadith shows us that the miracle of the Quran is so miraculous that all of the other miracles of all of the other prophets don't even come close to the miracle of the Quran. Why? Because what did he link the miracle of the Quran to? The number of the ummah. He said, because of the Qur'an, I'm optimistic that I shall have the largest ummah. What does that indicate about the Qur'an? That it is the most effective miracle that Allah has ever revealed to any prophet, bar none, no exceptions. The Qur'an is the miracle of miracles. The Qur'an is the greatest miracle that Allah has ever sent to any prophet. And that is why our Prophet wasallam is saying, therefore I'm optimistic, I shall have the largest ummah on Qiyamah. And you know what? That has already been proven. The Muslim Ummah 
is the largest ummah. It has always been in terms of quantity. It is the largest ummah from the history of mankind. No ummah has been larger than the ummah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The other ummahs they might statistically be more, but as we know theologically they have strayed. They're not technically following the teachings of Jesus or Moses anymore. So in terms of those who are faithful to their Prophet, more than a billion Muslims of this generation. Add all of the billions that have come. Add all of the billions that will continue to come. There is no question that merely in terms of quantity, the Muslim Ummah is the largest Ummah. And the Prophet's prediction has fallen true. Now, our scholars have mentioned, why is the miracle of the Quran more powerful than all the other miracles? What makes, I mean, after all, Isa, Musa, Thamud, Salih, they all have their miracles. Why is the miracle of the Quran more powerful? And our scholars have mentioned that this is actually because of two primary points that make this miracle different from the other miracles of the previous prophets. Two points that make this miracle different from the miracle of all of the previous prophets. Number one, the miracle and the message is one and the same. You see, go back a thousand years, two thousand years, five thousand years. Every prophet comes and he has a book, he has a message, and then he has a miracle to prove the book and the message. Musa had the staff, he had the hand, he did all of that he did. Isa resurrected the dead, he the, cured the blind, healed the leper. Thamud Salih did what he did. So there's a miracle and there's a message. And the two are disconnected from one another. The miracle proves the message, the message comes after the miracle. How about the Quran? The message is the miracle and the miracle is the message. The Quran does not need external validation to prove it. The Quran is intrinsically able to prove itself without needing any external miracle to prove the truth of the Quran. No previous book can claim this. So the proof and the boast, the response and the challenge, the miracle and the message is combined in one and no previous scripture could claim that. This is unique. Number two, and it is related to point number one. Number two, the Quran is removed from the constraints of time and place. If I ask you, do you believe that Musa and his staff became a snake? Every Muslim here will say yes. If I ask you, do you believe that his hand was light? You will say yes. If I ask you, do you believe Isa resurrected Lazarus from the grave? You will say yes, I believe. I ask you, why do you believe? What will you say? The Quran says so. Did you see it? Did anybody you know see it? Did you physically witness this miracle? No, we simply have to believe what has happened before and we believe. Now, the miracle of the Quran. Did you have to be in 7th century Arabia to witness that miracle? Or is it accessible to you here and now? 4,000 miles away, 1,400 years later. The Quran is timeless. The Quran has removed the constraints of time and place. Any human being, anywhere in the world, in any society, in any frame of time, in any place and location, can witness the miracle directly. And what other miracle can claim this? What other miracle? Every other miracle, you need to have been an eyewitness or else you're simply believing other people. Which is fine, we believe the Quran, we believe in other people. But the miracle of the Quran, is independent of a particular time and place. And hence our Prophet ﷺ has every right to say, I therefore am optimistic that I will have the largest ummah because the Quran is not constrained by time and place. Any non-Muslim wants to challenge the Quran, here, here it is, read it, listen to it, ponder over it, and see if you can produce a chapter similar to it. The challenge is still operative. The Quran is still here amongst us that we can read and recite. What other miracle can claim this? Therefore, there is no question that the Quran is the ultimate miracle. Let me just mention very quickly six or seven things that make the Quran miraculous. The most obvious of them and the most self-evident and the one that the Quraysh understood immediately was the language and the style, the rhetoric and the eloquence of the Quran. Nothing ever composed by men resembles the Quran. Go look at the seven poems, the Mu'allaqat al sabah Go look at pre-Islamic poetry. Go look at all types of what is called nathr and rhythm and rhyme 
of pre-Islam and post-Islam. The genre of the Quran, the style of the Quran, the eloquence of the Quran is something that no human has even come close to. It truly is timeless. And that is why when the greatest poets of Quraysh heard it, when the greatest poets of Arabia heard it, they didn't know what to do. They were mesmerized. It is mentioned in the Quran, multiple instances of the seerah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Al-Walid, for example, Ibn Uqba, what he did when he heard the Quran. Abu Jahl, the enemy of Islam, at night he would go stand outside the house of the Prophet to listen to the Quran being recited. Because it was mesmerizing. He didn't know how to interpret it. So many of the Quraysh, even as they rejected the Quran, they didn't know how to explain it because it was atypical. And this is something that every one of us recognizes and realizes, subhanAllah, even if we don't speak Arabic, we appreciate the beauty beauty of the Quran. So this is the obvious point, And our scholars have written many books and treatises going into detail about what is so unique about the language and style of the Quran. The second point that we'll mention, and this list is not exhaustive, there's much to be said. The second point we'll mention, the preservation of the Quran and the prediction of the preservation. This is unique. It's one thing to be preserved. It's one thing Allah says in the book, it's going to be preserved. Inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. If you study the literature and the holy scripture of any other civilization, you will see the Quran is its, in its own category. Not the Gitas of Hinduism, not the books of ancient Buddhism, not the Old Testament, not the New Testament. Nothing is even in the same category as Quranic preservation. We have the earliest manuscripts, of, some of the earliest manuscripts of the Quran. The Quran was compiled and written down in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, the in rudimentary form, within a year after. After his death, when all of the major Sahaba were alive, the first from Fatiha to Nas compilation was done. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Then in the time of Uthman radiallahu anh, it was standardized across the Ummah so that no two groups, we differ about everything. We don't differ about the Quran. Our Muslim Ummah has so many ikhtilafat. There are no versions of the Quran. There is but one Quran around the globe. No other religion can claim this. And the beauty? Allah said so from the beginning. I'm going to preserve it, don't worry. The third point we'll mention is the predictions of the Quran. The Quran predicts things that's going to happen. For example, the famous incident of the Romans and the Persians. In a few years, Allah says, right now the Romans have lost. In a few years, the Romans will win over the Persians. And this happened. And the Quran speaks in the future tense. And it happened in the lifetime of the Sahaba and other predictions as well. Of the miracles of the Quran, the miraculous nature of the Quran is something that we rarely think about. And the Quran mentions it as being a miracle. And that is the stories of the Quran. The stories of the ancient prophets. You see, the Arab peoples, the, 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 the Quraysh and all, and, and all of the Arab tribes, they were disconnected from Bani Israel. They have nothing to do with the children of Ishaq. The stories of the Old Testament are not known in Mecca. Yusuf and Ishaq and what's happening with even, even Nuh and the flood and Ibrahim. This is not something the Arabs are concerned with. Musa and what happened with Musa is not something the people of Mecca are talking about. There are no Bibles in Arabic at the time. There is no library in Mecca. This knowledge is not just not known, it is unheard of. And in the middle of Arabia, a shepherd comes along without any formal education, without the capability to read and write, without having a library. And he begins narrating the tales that are known to all other civilizations. Imagine in a pre-internet era when the world was cut off and whatnot, you found a tribe in Brazil cut off from all of society and it knows the histories of what is going on in Rome and Persia. It knows everything that's happening in the world and telling you its stories. You will say, how did this tribe get this information? And Allah mentions this in the Quran. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِ you were not there, Ya Rasulullah. You were not there when they argued. You were not there when Allah spoke to, spoke to Musa. You were not there when Zakariya and the angel came. Allah mentions in the Quran that these stories are a miracle. How did you know this? Neither you nor your people knew these stories before the revelation of the Quran. Number four of the miracles of the Quran, I will go over very quickly the theology. In the middle of an idolatrous society, the Quran preaches a unique monotheism. A monotheism that is unheard of, strict monotheism. Belief in Allah, belief in the angels, belief in Qadr. The theology is unique and it makes sense. How can a shepherd in the 7th century come forth with this perfect? And that's why Allah says, You did not know. 
ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان. You did not know, يا رسول الله, what was the kitab, the Quran, what was iman until we sent it down to you. Number six, the laws and the morality of the Quran, the Sharia of Islam. In a society where racism was rampant, Allah says, "O oh mankind, we created you from one man and one and one woman, and we made you different races and tribes so that you can get to know one another." Allah eliminated racism in a society that preferred men over women and allowed women to be buried alive. The first revelations were protecting females, protecting those innocent lady girls that were killed in a society where lawlessness was rampant, where there was no hak. And Batil, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the Quran laws about truth, about honesty, about justice, about virtue. And that's what Ja'far al-Sadiq said to the Negus that, O oh, Negus, we were a society immersed in jahiliyyah. We would do every type of sin. Then Allah sent us a prophet with the revelation that taught us truth from falsehood. So the laws and the ethics of the Quran, and we'll conclude because of time, of the, of the things that are miraculous about the Quran, is the impact that the Quran has on those who listen to it. Simply by listening to the Quran, you know in your instinct, in your fitrah, your gut of guts, your heart of hearts, you know that this is from Allah. And the beauty, and I speak as somebody who did not know Arabic once upon a time, I for my whole entire life until I was 20 did not speak Arabic. I did not understand any Arabic. The beauty, us who are non-Arabs and we don't understand the phrase of Arabic, even us when we hear the Quran, we know this is not the speech of a man. We know this is the speech of Allah. The impact, the emotions, the crying, the fear, the hope that a language we don't even understand has upon us. This cannot be qawlul bashar. This is the kalam of Rabbil bariya. And that's the beauty and the miracle of the Quran. And Allah mentions this in the Quran. When they hear what has been recited to the Prophet do you find them crying. This is upon non-Muslims that are good. Allah says, good non-Muslims, righteous non-Muslims, when they hear the Quran, you find them impacted. And you know there are YouTube videos videos of famous people being uh, put the Quran on, on earphone for the first time. We see the impact. Some of them crying, some of them mesmerized. They cannot understand what they have heard. The impact of the Quran on the qalb that is pure, it is a miracle from Allah. And the final point we'll mention, and again, this is not an exhaustive list. The final point we'll mention, which is a miracle that is palpable. We can sense it, we can see it, we can feel it, is the miracle of the memorization of the Quran. And this is something that once again, we as Muslims undervalue, undervalue completely. When somebody becomes a half of the amongst us, oh, mashallah, good boy, jazakallah, that's it, move on. Do you not realize that a 10 year old child memorizing 600 pages in a language that he doesn't even understand is a walking, talking, living miracle? Can you memorize one page in a language you don't understand? If I were to give you, if you don't speak Japanese, I gave you a page of Japanese. Could you memorize that page in 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 50 minutes? How about memorizing 600 pages in a language you don't even understand without a single mistake? Haraka, sukoon, word for word, letter for letter. The hufaz are walking miracles that this is a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every hafiz is an ayah min ayatillahi ta'ala because no other book can be memorized like this. Bal huwa ayatun bayyinatun fi sudur alladheena utul ilm. Allah mentions in the Quran, these are clear verses in the hearts of those who have ilm. No other book has been preserved in this manner. No other book can be memorized with such ease. No other book has that impact. No other book has within it the theology, the morality, the laws of the Quran. And my dear brothers and sisters, Allah has praised Himself because of the Quran. Tabarak alladhi nazzal al furqana ala abdi. Tabarak to Allah who has sent the Quran down. Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdi al kitab. All praise be to Allah who has sent the Quran down. Allah is worthy of being worshipped because of the Quran. This is the miracle of the Quran. May Allah bless me and you with and through the Quran. And may He make us of those who its verses they understand and those who apply its halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah to forgive me. You as well ask Him. He is the Ghafoor, the Rahman.